What's up? <laughs> what's up? What's up? Wow. Steve Stout. He loves to Steve Stout himself, don't he? He loved that. I told you all about Steve Stout, didn't I? It's funny because everything they say about me is people just lash right out. They jump right out the box. And say, you don't know what you're talking about. And I'll never get excited. But I see y'all statements. And I've been doing this for years, bruh. Years. And one thing I know is that I always get proven right <laughs> about people. Whether it's Nori, whether it's everybody. People prove me right because they're going to be who they are. Steve Stout is a smart, smug, narcissistic man. He's ego-driven, and he decided while he was on first take to, once again, show that ego, open his mouth, and say something stupid. So he comes in there and says, what? The New York Knicks is going to fire Mike Miller, the coach. Drake, he compares himself to what Drake was with the... Uh, With the Raptors. Not once has Drake ever went on any interview and say who the dog on Raptors should fire as coach. But you did. First day on the job. I know Dolan saw that and was like, this is what I'm bringing through the doors. Y'all told me this Steve Stout, <laughs> he was the guy. Dolan's been knowing Stout for years. Stout is the type that would sell out his own mother if it was a good business deal. Maybe, man, these terms are too good to turn down, ma. But, son, ma, it's just business. He never saw a deal that didn't sit with him. And somehow, he thinks because he does good business or because he's in the realm of business, he's protected. And he's looked at like everyone else. And he can just say and do whatever he wants. He has a history of saying things out of line to people. He basically calls the feud with Cormega and Nas. Then, we all remember what he did with 50 Cent because he works for Jimmy Iovine. 50 goes independent. And then he comes out talking about, I don't know, right now, his aggressive, violent content. Aggressive, violent content with 50 Cent compared to all the other People that have come from Interscope in hip hop, where Death Row was easy listening rap. 
I mean, it, it was ridiculous. And 50 at the Knicks game <laughs> came and approached him on the floor. Like, I see what you're doing. And you're playing a game where you're going to get beat down right here in front. 50 ain't that type of guy that's going to let it slide. And when nobody thought any two ways about it. <clears throat> he was in the middle <clears throat> of the Jay-Z Nas beef. He was working with Nas. They're going to slip over there and start working with Jay. You know, that guy is something else. So in the interview, he's talking as if he's in the front office. And the Knicks were going to fire him right there on the spot. Because if they're going to fire this coach, which they might, they might very well replace him. You know, he was an interim at best. And they might be looking for a new full-time coach. You don't do it like that. You don't go on first take and say, yeah, we might, we're going to be looking to replace the coach. That's not why you're there, Steve. You have not been in that meetings to even make that kind of decision. And even if you were, you would know that's an in-house thing. Their respect levels, that's a man. That is a man that has a family. And to find out that he's finna be on the way out when you're just a brand consultant this is your first interview on the job first day as the brand consultant and you come right out and <laughs> if this is what the brand consultant does This is what the brand conduct something does. He walks in and screws up immediately. And my thing is, you saying what did what I don't understand is who young knows anything about Steve Stout? Not too many young people know him. Steve Stout is real familiar with Leon Rose. Therefore, he's familiar with people like LeBron and that Rich Paul looking dude. And and now that he's over there with you know, the Knicks, and they hired who? Leon Rose, LeBron's former agent. <laughs> they bring it in Stout. And they trusted that this guy would do well advertising for the New York Knicks, doing some interviews and promoting the Knicks. And trying to push over to the African Americans, hello, we're not bigoted. By hiring a guy who can give a damn. A guy with no morals. A guy with no code. No honor.
And because he has the same complexion as everybody else who have values, we go ahead and crown him. I don't know anybody I know. <laughs> I mean, Drake, I can see being an ambassador for the Raptors. You know, he's from Toronto. He basically put Toronto on the map from in the hip-hop sense. He brought a lot of money to Toronto. Hell, they were talking about moving the Raptors from Toronto. Like they did from Vancouver. The talks was already out. Like, what should we do here? We might have to move, find a city and move them, you know, from Toronto and bring them out here. So, and this was when they had Vincent Carter. Now, that made sense. Nobody really deals with Steve Stout enough so he can be a brand ambassador okay but you better off getting someone of stature that people can resonate with and really know nobody really knows Steve Stout like that except for other industry people you ask any of these younger guys, they don't really know who Steve Stout is. They see him, it's like, okay. I'm going to go get excited to go see the Knicks now because Steve Stout is talking about the Knicks. <laughs> Steve Stout's talking about the Knicks, man. Yeah, they got him on TV. He's talking about the Knicks. Honey, get my coat. Yeah, stay stout said some things today. I'm gonna go over here. Check out the Knicks. Knicks don't have a ticket selling problem. As the number one earning team in the NBA without Steve Stout. <laughs> as the number one earning team for years in selling tickets. What could Stout be there for? He's there to be the pony piece. He's there to be the blanket. He's there to take care of all of these little mundane tasks that they would normally throw to somebody else. That they don't feel like being bothered with. When they don't want to do the certain interview, send Stout. <laughs> Let Stout go talk to him. But never was it all right for him to sit there and talk about personnel decisions. So when this was done, the New York Knicks called him immediately. He was terminated until he begged for his job back. Because this was going to hurt his brand. And said, oh my God, I, I, I overstepped my boundaries. So he apologized. Begged him. Begged him. Not to fire him. Because he knew this was going to hurt his bread. And that he overstepped his boundaries. So on his first day on the job, he gets an Allen branch. He gets an olive branch. First day. Unbelievable, man. I'll tell you this one thing. He has definitely stirred things up. He has definitely stirred things up.
Now, what I've seen here is a case of the fact that they might have told Steve Stout that they were going to fire the coach. And that presents a lot of issues and problems. So the Knicks and Steve Stout put out a press release. And the press release states, while Steve Stout is a valid contributor to the Knicks marketing and branding efforts, he does not speak on behalf of the New York Knicks personnel and basketball operations. Any decisions regarding the operations of the team will be made by the new president of the New York Knicks. Now, from Steve Stout. In my excitement to defend the Knicks on live TV today, I inadvertently insinuated about the Knicks personnel. I look forward to working with the Knicks management to elevate the great Knicks brand moving forward. So, when you see things like that, you see, okay, post Steve, right? Post Steve. He didn't know what he was doing. He was just vintage Steve Stout. Bucket and dance. As he's always done. But hey, it's Steve. Right? <sighs> I'm not surprised here, people. You guys asked me to talk about it. I was like, dude, why you ain't talking about Stout? I expect this kind of stuff out of him. So it's no real big news to me. But you guys wanted to hear it, so that was it. what we always thought about him and he's supposed to be this marketing guru oh well <laughs> we'll see right a team that has zero issues with marketing has zero issues with selling tickets the number one earning team in the NBA the New York Knickerbockers brought in a marketing guru for a uh, <laughs> anyway, my cash app is Carcino. Hopefully, you guys will donate if you like the videos. We'd like to go live with you guys so we can get into some other things. What? But we'll see. I'm out.